Snazzy GQ approved tuxedo jacket. Check. Bow tie. Check. Cufflinks. Check. Pocket square. Check. Little spritz of scent. Check. Welcome to the British GQ Men of the Year Awards 2020 in association with Hugo Boss. We're here at the stunning Coliseum Theatre. Ah, oh, theatres. Do you remember them? No, me neither. We were actually very lucky with this place. It had been booked for the Bond premiere, so we uh, got it at a bargain. 2020 has, of course, been a year like no other. A global pandemic, the Black Lives Matter movement, the UK government deciding it was time to stop feeding children, not to mention a squatter in the White House, and finally hope of a long-awaited vaccine. Put it this way, how long ago does Tiger King feel? And GQ, once again, has had its well-manicured finger very much on the pulse. John Boyega's cover interview, Prince Harry's headline-grabbing one-on-one with Patrick Hutchinson, and of course, my first ever interview with the magazine, which can be found in the deepest, darkest depths of this month's online edition. Really worth the deep dive. Yes, here at GQ, we are not going to let the world crumbling in front of our very eyes dampen our spirits. Instead, as the only awards ceremony in the UK that honors global superstars and everyday heroes alike, we are going to celebrate some of the incredible people who have given us just that glimmer of hope in the epic catastrophe that is 2020. The people who have inspired us, who have stood up for those in need, and also those who have made great TV so we didn't go insane when they canceled the footy. Oh, and spoiler alert, there is no politician of the year. Among those we will be honoring tonight, a global pop phenomenon, Sean Mendes. A winner this year, if only for that new haircut. Sean will be giving us a very special performance later in the show. Also, we have everyone's crush of 2020, actor Paul Mescal, from BBC's Normal People, and the one and only Captain Sir Tom Moore. A true hero, as you have never seen him before. Now, the eagle-eyed amongst you may have noticed that while the Men of the Year Awards usually take place at the Tate Modern with a packed audience, tonight, there's no one here. That actually has nothing to do with social distancing or lockdowns. The guests just found out that Piers Morgan was winning the TV Personality Award. That's not a joke. He actually wins that award. Nice little boost for that fragile ego of his. There might not be an audience, but luckily enough, just like the Premier League, you do have the choice of watching this evening with added crowd noise, pumping in sound effects from an actual GQ Awards. So instead of hearing my jokes play to deathly silence, you can instead hear them being greeted by the sound of 500 drunk celebrities talking amongst themselves for that authentic GQ Awards experience. <laughs> OK, let's crack on. The first award is for Campaigner of the Year. Age 23, he has single-handedly taken on a government and helped fight to feed some of the most vulnerable children in society. And if you thought that was impressive, he's also able to bag 20 goals a season, playing in front of a midfield pivot of Scott McTominay and Fred. Is there anything this man can't do? The GQ Campaigner of the Year is Marcus Rashford. Video you, videoing Marcus, so you need to be sensible, but you can have fun. This is me and my friends. This is Marcus. He likes exercise. This is a film crew. What? I didn't know you could zoom in like that. Hi, Mikhail. We're going to film Marcus. <laughs> my school is hosting the GQ Campaigner of the Year. Can I shake hands for you? Not I, don't know. I don't know what the rules are. <laughs> what are we making? Uh, we're going to do some meat rules. So this has got to be the weirdest place for an awards ceremony. Yeah. Uh, this is your old primary school, right? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Don't you ever imagine you'd be back here in the kitchen? No, because <laughs> I, I can't cook. Ingredients. One times X people. 
Add Penny. One times baked beans. One times primary school. One times campaigning chef. One times dinner date. Pasta. And the sprinkling of Britain's future. Do you want a little knife or a big knife? Big knife. Big knife. I've heard quite good chopping onions up really small. Not the onions not today. The onions. <laughs> oh, not the onions. I hate chopping onions. Oh, right, right. Oh, <laughs> so this was a recipe that, um, that I made from food bank box. I was a single mum and I was using food banks. So this comes in at like under a pound a head. When you were at school, um, yeah. did you have like yeah. breakfast club, free school meals, yeah, stuff like that? Club. Free school meals and after school club as well, so. I have to say, it's really admirable coming out and saying, hey, that was me, I was in that situation. What you're doing is you're breaking down that stigma. Yeah, that exactly. You know, the big thing for me is making people feel comfortable with telling people that they need help. You know, it's something that nobody should be, be ashamed of. What's, what's <laughs> next? What's <laughs> next? Sorry, let's fry some meatballs, <laughs> shall we? Oh, it's jumping in that <laughs> Yeah, put the hands straight in. That's actually starting to smell quite nice. Look at it. You were campaigning for kids to have the vouchers for free school meals, and in like 24 hours, the government did a U turn. That is something that people have been campaigning for years, and then in a day, you managed yeah. to turn it around. How did that feel? I think, like you say, I've, I've obviously helped a, a lot of people. But I know that there's still loads more people that need the help. You know, for me, it's a problem that shouldn't exist in this generation. My biggest aim is to try and just give kids the best chance from the day that they're born. There we go. I uh, just want to say a big thank you to GQ and, you know, thank you for awarding me with the, um, oh, I forgot what it's called. I <laughs> uh, just want to say a big thank you to GQ for awarding me with the Campaigners Award. Um, really appreciate it, so thank you very much. <laughs> Marcus Rashford, Campaigner of the Year. You love to see it. That GQ award, probably the only trophy going to Old Trafford this year. Tonight's next award is for the GQ Icon of the Year. It goes to John Boyega. John became an icon the moment that mic was thrust into his hand in Hyde Park in June, and he delivered a moving and powerful speech that resonated with people across the globe. This is your Icon of the Year. person who is successful, uh, who shares their success, um, who is inspirational to multiple people. If you are like that as an individual, but then you've come across my life and impacted my inspiration and my motivation for your success, you're an icon. First icon is Daniel Kaluuya, a young actor from the UK. Uh, the reason why he is my icon is because until today, this guy still shows up in my life once in a while and tells me what I need to hear at that moment. And that's why I think he's, a, he's an icon, man, and he's a, he's a great actor. My second icon is my mother, Abigail Adeboyega, my second icon. She's the person, you know, to go to when you want things handled uh, prim and proper with a little bit of discipline. So my third icon is Chimamanda Adochi. For a long time, she's been a great advocate of women's rights. And what more do you want? Thank you for this phenomenal award and for the opportunity to just receive something like this. It's made me um, fully motivated to make sure I fulfill this title, what we do for other people, how we inspire other people. And thank you for noticing me doing that. Because now, you know, in, in many, in many sense, I feel fully motivated to continue doing it. And I will.
Congratulations to the brilliant John Boyega. Our next award is for the Hugo Boss Breakthrough Actor of the Year. The winner is Paul Mescal. Emmy nominated and now a GQ award. What a year he's had. Very much the Captain Tom of the millennial generation. Let's see your Hugo Boss Breakthrough Actor of the Year. Hi, I'm Paul Mesco and I play Connell in Normal People. I'm incredibly honoured to accept the Hugo Boss Breakthrough Actor Award and to celebrate we're going to watch the GQ action replay of Normal People and it's going to be the last episode. I'm sorry. It's okay. I'm okay. So uh, this chain was the one that I wore throughout filming, um, but I also have my own ones and I got to donate one to Pieta House Charity that I, I love back at home in Ireland and it um, earned about 70,000 euros, which was, will go a long way, so that, that's really exciting. This is the perfect opportunity to fast forward. <laughs> we got out. Pause it there. Yeah, so we had an intimacy coordinator who was amazing and ultimately the fact that I think the scenes look um, really true and organic, but the main thing is, is that me and Daisy felt safe because we had an amazing crew, an amazing set of directors on this and um, yeah, it just gave us the opportunity to make something that felt like two young people in a really healthy relationship. It's not nice to watch, but it's nice to be part of, well, not nice to watch for me, but uh, nice to be involved in terms of uh, something that I'm, I'm really proud of that the world gets to see and it's not something to be ashamed of in any shape, way or form. Darling, darling. That is a long 30 seconds. <laughs> don't promise that. You don't know where either of us will be. That is an insane piece of acting from Daisy, the way she delivers that line. This was the very last thing that we, we shot. So obviously, it, 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 I, I don't know, I, I just think they're beautiful characters and the way they are with each other is uh, uh, pretty special, I think. I'll go. <laughs> and I'll stay. <laughs> and I'll be okay. That was the very last day of the shoot, and that was on, on the pickups as well. And I remember I, it was quite sad because you're obviously the scene itself is quite heavy, and um, that kind of work was my favorite part of it like working in a big kind of two hander scene with Daisy. One I think we're both really proud of that scene in particular. Up next is the award for design legend. It goes to Tommy Hilfiger, AKA Mr. America, who celebrates three and a half decades in the business this year. An extraordinary achievement in an age that has seen the fashion landscape change irrevocably. I would say it's been an extraordinary year on many levels. The world was truly shaken up, but we have also seen so much positivity and real lasting change. From the Black Lives Matter movement to more sustainability focus, I have great hope for what will come as a result of this year. And while there is still a long way to go on this journey, we're not going to stop until we get there. My greatest dream is to embody our Americana heritage by creating fashion for all. I've always thought that American styles should embody the country's spirit by being inclusive and democratic. It's a true honor to be recognized by the authority on men's fashion. Since day one, I wanted to make my mark on the industry and leave behind a meaningful legacy. It's been a whirlwind that still excites, challenges, and inspires me every day. I'm completely honored to receive this award. It is sacred, and I will cherish it forever. 
Thank you very much, GQ. Congratulations to Tommy Hilfiger. The next award is for Maddox Gallery Artist of the Year. And despite it being another big year for Banksy, with his politically charged murals capturing the public mood, God, he's come a long way since hosting Art Attack. The winner is actually Charlie Mackesy, whose book, The Boy, the Mole, the Fox and the Horse, with its message about communication and good mental health, has spent more than a year in the Sunday Times bestsellers top 10. My name's Charlie Mackesy. Nice to meet you. I started drawing really because um, my best friend was killed. And I started drawing as a way of making sense of existence when I was 19. The book came two years ago. I started drawing for that. It was never meant to be a book. It just sort of became one in the end. Instagram was one of the main ways I, I sort of heard from people. And they're very honest and open and really candid about what was going on in their lives. I discovered the NHS were using them right through Britain and then you know, I would see images of drawings stuck on lampposts in LA, in Sydney, in Melbourne, places where things were really tough. I guess for me, it just happened by surprise. And the more I saw it, the more I, I drew. That, that's certainly surreal, having Oprah ring read your book out. But I'm very grateful for doing it. I think, you know, one of the things about the book has been uh, working on the notion that men, we as men, probably struggle to be open about what we're really feeling, particularly when times are tough. And, you know, we put on a good show, but ultimately, you know, there's, there are times when it's important we, we tell the truth. And I was really struck by Chris Hemsworth, actually, and how he kind of raved about the book. I think sometimes I feel lost, said the boy, um, because I think people have felt quite lost and they're a bit frightened about where we're going or where is this going to end. The idea that, you know, everyone feels lost, a bit lost, that love brings you home. To physically produce it, they're quite quick, but the thinking behind them can take a long time. This drawing went into a lot of hospitals, I think, and schools. I think I describe what we're in now as a storm. What's the best thing you've learned about storms? And the answer is that they end. I think we feel like we're in a, a never-ending storm. So the horse always seems to have the wisest answer. Congratulations to Charlie Mackesy. The great thing for you guys at home is you can just laze around in your casual wear watching the show. So I thought I'd do the same. Take my opportunity to make the most of the full Hugo Boss range. This cheeky little number is from the Anthony Joshua Sportswear Collection. Sure, I don't necessarily fill it out quite like the champ does, but I think you will all agree it's still a Luke. The next award is for Creative Icon, and it goes to the star of I May Destroy You, Michaela Cole. I May Destroy You, which she wrote and starred in, as a fellow comedian, I can tell you, is the type of show that is so good, it makes me want to quit my job and retrain as a Deliveroo driver. Hello, Michaela. Hey, it's Louise. Look at your wings. If you could give your 16-year-old self three pieces of advice, what would they be? Stay brave, stay focused, and don't stop playing. Oh, hello. Hi, GQ. Welcome to my private space. I go dancing in the park at night. And actually, I saw my neighbor the other day when I was like leaving to go and dance. He said, oh, are you going for a run around the park? He said, careful, around this time, there's these crazy dancers. There's these two people, nutters. I don't know what they're on. And I was thinking, that's me. <laughs> I'm going to start at the beginning where my respect and admiration for you begun. An open mic night many moons ago. You, Michaela the poet, reciting what would become my favorite poem, Love Is. So my question is, what's your idea of love now? Have you found the kind of love you always wanted, the one you wrote about all those years ago? She just made me emotional. <sighs> oh, 
cool throwbacks. Well, here's the interesting thing about the poem. I'm saying about all the kind of love I want and then I end it with saying I have that kind of love because I do believe that actually like our existence I feel is a sign of love. I just think our existence is like a bit of a miracle. Before a major project, what do you tell yourself to prepare yourself? One thing comes to mind, which is something that uh, Hugo Blick would say to me, and he would say, remember, it's all Chinatown. Sometimes you can get really uh, wrapped up in things and nervous and, and so stressful that it actually begins to make you sick. And that's when you've got to remember, like, this is all play. What we're doing is play and we take it seriously, like you take all games very seriously. But then, you know, just remember, this is play. Um, so be cool. Hello, we're Ruche Opfia here and I have a question for the incredible Ms. Michaela Cole. While shooting I May Destroy You, we made up a number of songs. Some of them made it onto screen, some of them didn't. What was the first song that we ever made up together? I'll give you two clues. Yeah. Bottle and soup. Oh! And you better get it. And I think you should sing it for everyone. Soup in a bottle, curry in a sneaker. My soul's getting weaker, my spirit's getting deeper. Soup in a bottle. That's it. <gasps> Jiku Creative Icon, yeah? Is that you, yeah? I'm gassed. I'm so gassed for you. I'm so proud of you. I can't imagine anyone who deserves the recognition like you do. This is amazing. Me and you, we're both from Ghana. We spent some very memorable times together in Ghana. And I would like to ask you, how much do you think your heritage uh, influences and affects the work that you make and the person that you are today? You know, my mum came here from Ghana in her 20s, so I was raised with uh, just a, a, a very non-British and very Ghanaian culture. Room service for Michaela Cole. Thank you. Special delivery from Jack Blackwell. Nice. They even got, I'm like, wow, stunning. Wow. <sighs> um, thank you so much, GQ. It's been an incredible time, actually, because my first shoot with GQ was the first one out of uh, lockdown, and I felt very comfortable here and very safe. And each shoot and experience I've had has been amazing. I want to say thank you for this award. Uh, it's been a lot. The show was a lot. It was a lot of pain. It was a lot of joy. And I feel very, 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 very honoured to receive this award. Thank you. Congratulations to the hugely talented Michaela Cole. Still to come tonight, an exclusive performance by pop icon Sean Mendes, plus Captain Tom's workout routine. Yes, really. What? Sorry, mate, we're, we're still going down here? So, excuse me. Do you have to do that now? Unbelievable. <laughs> Time for the next award. It's for the Peroni Breakthrough Designer of the Year. The winner is Daniel W. Fletcher. Daniel featured on Netflix's Next in Fashion and marked his first year as the artistic director for menswear at Ferrucci by making extensive and exciting use of dead stock in his creative process. Are you gonna do the whole theater? Is it? Where do they find these people? My name is Theo van den Bruecker, and I'm the Style and Grooming Director of British GQ. I'm here in East London today to present our Peroni Breakthrough Designer of the Year Award to Daniel Fletcher. Fletcher has, in the past half decade or so, made a name for himself as one of the most exciting talents on London's burgeoning menswear scene. With his unique aesthetic and host of famous devotees, including Harry Styles, Sam Smith and Troy Savan, to name a few, Fletcher, who is also the Artistic Director of Menswear at Fiorucci, is a more than worthy winner of this year's award. Hey Teo, welcome to the studio. Thank you. 
Daniel Fletcher, congratulations on your Breakthrough Designer of the Year at the GQ Men of the Year Awards. Thank you so much. It, this is a huge honour. What? It's heavy. <laughs> I can't believe it, you know. This is really like a huge moment for me. I remember being an intern at VTON and seeing Kim come back with his for Designer of the Year. And He's got like 15. Though, yeah, it's a good haul. <laughs> um, but to be sitting here with one in front of me now myself is huge, huge honour. So thank you all so much. It's very well deserved. <laughs> One of the most formative points in your career was dressing Harry Styles. In fact, he was your first client, wasn't he? He was my first customer. He bought all the shirts of my graduate collection. I did a couple of custom ones for him as well, and that was a really great starting point for my career. Like, it hadn't been for him, then I, maybe I wouldn't be sat here today, actually. So I really owe a lot to Mr. Styles. I'm sure you would be. But that's very humble. Thank you. So obviously we don't have a physical GQ Men of the Year uh, celebration this year, but we are doing it digitally, of which you are obviously a big part. And I was wondering if you would consider dressing me for the occasion in some DWF black tie gear. Of course. Let's, uh, let's get you in some stuff. Let's do it. This is a gorgeous coat. Amazing. Finishing touch. Oh. <laughs> thank you, Daniel. Well, Fantastic. no, uh, thank you. And uh, thanks to GQ and Peroni for this. It's a huge honour. Um, back to you, Jack Whitehall. Congratulations to Daniel W. Fletcher. Time now for the award for TV Personality of the Year. I hope it's not one of those cringe moments where the host gets it. Actually, I've never won a GQ award, so probably won't get one this year either. Anyway, let's find out who's won. Goes to a man who's not only a journalist, but the host of Good Morning Britain, making him a writer and presenter. A WAP. Yeah, a big old WAP. Yes, this next bit contains a lot of Piers Morgan, so adjust your volume accordingly. Or if you've got a mute button, I'd fire it up. Tonight, I'm going to be interviewing somebody who divides opinion like few others. Whether he's talking about transgender athletes or vegan sausage rolls or papooses and President Trump, he has opinions and attitudes which inflame Twitter on an hourly basis. But tonight, he's getting an award for something different, and it's very specific, and it's his skewering of British government ministers during this global pandemic holding them to account on behalf of the British people, trying to get answers when they really don't want to give them. He is Piers Morgan, winner of GQ's TV Personality of the Year. And tonight, he's going to be interviewed by me, Piers Morgan. Who would you vote for in the next UK election? Boris Johnson or Sir Keir Starmer? I would definitely not vote for Boris Johnson. So if it was a choice of him or anybody, frankly, I'd vote for anybody. Um, I, he has been a total disaster as a leader. I voted for him on one issue. I couldn't vote for Jeremy Corbyn. Um, and on Boris, I felt at least he's going to deliver Brexit. And I was a Remainer who thought that democracy depended on delivering the result of the referendum. So I, I couldn't. I would rather shoot myself than vote for Boris. And people know my views on guns. So. Trump unfollowed you on Twitter. Do you still consider him a friend? Well, I think that Trump, if I saw him, he'd probably be fine. I mean, he's... You know, I've been critical of him before, but he... He came out with this ridiculous notion that we should all be injecting ourselves with bleach. And so I wrote a column for the mail where the headline was, shut the fuck up, Mr. President. Your batshit crazy ideas will get people killed. And he unfollowed me overnight. Have you even read my book? Come on. Let me give you a copy. Thank you. I'll try reading it. Cheers. Of course I've read it. It's a fantastic book. You were quite supportive of him earlier in the book. I mean, do you regret that now, given his COVID response? No, I've always tried to be fair-minded with Trump. I think journalists' job is not to be partisan about anything, whether it's Brexit, Boris, Trump, coronavirus. I don't think it's a journalist, impartial journalist's job to take sides. So with Trump, I always try to be fair-minded. Of the Daily Mail columns, I've written over 100 about Trump, and half have been critical and half have been positive until the pandemic. Since the pandemic, 99% negative.
Well, Piers, I'm delighted to tell you, you are GQ's TV Personality of the Year for 2020. Congratulations. Well, thank you very much, but I sort of feel we should be sharing this, shouldn't we? I mean, it's as much you as me. We should really be sharing it, shouldn't we? All right, then. Two Piers Morgans, a chilling thought. Hey, he's not everyone's cup of tea, but someone's gonna make those politicians squirm. Also, if you want to see more of Piers, you should watch his show on Netflix, Serial Killer with Piers Morgan. Each week, they take an angry, egotistical narcissist and get him to interview a serial killer. Great TV. The next award is for Humanitarian of the Year. The winner is Patrick Hutchinson. Patrick attended the Black Lives Matter protests on London's South Bank this summer with the intention of keeping the peace becoming a symbol of tolerance and empathy when he was photographed carrying a white counter-protester to safety amid a heated confrontation in the crowd. An image that was seen around the world, an incredible moment and an incredible privilege to honour him tonight. We were, we were at a spot called Eat of Eden and um, then my sister Pauline um, messaged me with an image, said, is this you, bruv? It looks like you. And then I sort of just laughed and said, yeah. And she just said to me, this is like, this is on Reuters and it's going viral. I don't know, do you know this? <laughs> and I, I put it on my Instagram account, I put the image and then I put the video footage on there and I put it, I just, at the time I just coined the phrase, I just said, um, it's not black versus white, it's everybody versus the racists. Been watching a, a lot of the demonstrations on TV and a lot of the other things that were happening in the world. Sometimes you kind of feel a bit helpless sitting at home. And obviously when you have children to take care of and grandchildren and stuff, and it's not easy to just get up and go to a demonstration. So yeah, just sitting at home in those uh, weeks preceding that day, it, it was, you know, playing on my mind a lot. When, uh, you know, George Floyd was murdered, that was a, a real, like, poignant moment where it was like, uh, enough is enough. And, you know, something's got to be done now because, you know, how many more of us are going to, you know, going to be killed? And uh, we all sit by and just, like, act as if it's just another everyday thing, you know? It's easy to sit by and say to, you know, any individual, but especially young people, to, to be the bigger person and to not react and not let things escalate. But, you know, when you're at the other, on the other end of, of racism and oppression, it's very difficult and we're all different, difficult individuals. One of the reasons we were there to, to protect and oversee and to stop the young people doing things that they may regret, because once they've done that thing, <laughs> and then go, get in front of the, the justice system, they're not going to be fairly treated. We know that. We had um, diffused quite a few situations, the, the, you know, the, the guys, um, but they weren't all caught on camera. You know, there, was, there was one time when uh, a car was attacked with EDL members or suspected EDL members inside the car. We, we stopped that happening. There was one young man that was turned on. They all of a sudden thought he was a member of EDL. They turned on him, we stopped that happening. It was a young man that was doing graffiti with a template, a fist template. He was sort of spraying it all over the place and we got in between him and the police, calmed the situation down and we took the, the paint and the, the spray and stuff away from the young man and gave it to the police. The incident that sort of got went viral, we were sort of at a distance when we noticed um, where there was a bit of an altercation happening between um, the Black Lives Matter protesters and the, um, the EDL members at the top of the stairs leading up to the embankment. And uh, we, we, we were sort of uh, rushing over there to try and, you know, calm the situation. And then before we could even get over there, there, there was only one guy left. I think the rest of the EDL members had, had run off and left him by himself. And he, he looked heavily intoxicated and sort of didn't know where he was. I could see a Rastafarian man just trying to protect him, telling people just to, just to stay calm and just to leave him alone. And then uh, people started to understand what was happening and they started to, to attack him. They started to, you know, throw punches and stuff and try to get to him. So by the time we got over there, 
he got to the bottom of the stairs and there was an absolute stampede going on. There was lots and lots of people. You couldn't see anything and you couldn't see where he was. The guys who'd got there just before me, they were basically sifting through people trying to, trying to find where this guy was and try to protect him. And then I came in just behind them and just thought, you know, the only thing I can do here, because we're all going to get trampled at some point, is just to, to scoop him up and, and, and carry him out to safety, which is what I did. Walked him over to the police and, and said, here you go. So it's no surprise to you you've been given this award? No. No surprise at all. He deserves it. He really does. So proud of him. Very, very, very proud. Congratulations to the inspirational Patrick Hutchinson. This next award, sponsored by Hugo Boss, is for Breakthrough Actress of the Year. The winner is Lashana Lynch. Lashana has already found success in the Marvel Cinematic Universe after she appeared as fighter pilot Maria Rambo in Captain Marvel, but her role alongside James Bond will surely propel her to even more dizzying heights. I thought this was just an awards thing, but now I'm seeing machines and that guy. Why is he there? Oh my gosh, this is so intense. Okay, yeah. Did you like Bond films before you acted in one? Yeah. Yes! It's a show and a lie already. Have you seen all of them? I hadn't seen all of them. But at the start of filming, I started watching from Dr. No onwards. So, technically, yes. In real life, do you relate more with Bond or his supervillains? Bond. Yeah. What? What are you talking about? No, Bond. I don't relate to Bond supervillains. So why would I? <laughs> OK. This is definitely broken, but OK, sure. Oh, this is intense. Have you been told who the next Bond is? No. What? I have not been told, I promise you. I don't even know if they know. <laughs> no, they look at me, I'm telling the truth. Do you do your own stunts? Yes, the ones that they'll allow for insurance purposes. Are you and Nomi alike? Yeah, we're both driven and honest and want to change the world. So yeah, in that respect. I'm not yet a ninja, she is, but yes. <laughs> Can you keep a secret? Yes, to a fault. I enjoy it. We won't ask you again. Have you been told who the next Bond is? No. <laughs> it's a nervous laugh, <laughs> OK? <laughs> Trust me, I don't know. <laughs> who do you prefer, Bond or Bond? Bond. Who would be your favourite to play the next Bond? I honestly don't know. I don't know. Which is true, isn't it? Yes, I don't know. There's some good ideas out there, but I'm not sure yet. Just see who they choose. And the next question. Wait, can I ask a question? Jack, was this your idea? What? Because I'm very uncomfortable. No, it wasn't. It was GQ's idea, I promise. OK. That's a lie, but whatever. Next question. Do you Google yourself? Yeah. <laughs> Finally, who is the GQ Hugo Boss Breakthrough Actress of the Year? Say this. Thank you so much. Okay.
Okay, bye. Our final award is for Inspiration of the Year. For me, it's a straight shootout. Joe Wicks and Captain Sir Tom Moore were really the two great heroes of the pandemic. One reached the milestone of 100 years old by raising more than 30 million pounds for the NHS, having already risked his life for this country whilst winning an actual war. The other spent lockdown doing lunges dressed as Harry Potter. And then, to be fair, did raise quite a lot of money for children in need. Only one can be named GQ Inspiration of the Year. Who could it be? Let's find out. Ah, oh, yes, the laps around the house. <laughs> That's how it all started, I suppose. First, it felt quite hard. But then, when those endorphins kick in, you know it's hard to stop. I suppose I got quite good at it. I didn't want to draw any more attention to myself. There was already so much fuss about me in the press. I suppose it's just when you put your mind to it, the body follows. I wouldn't call myself a professional, just pretty good at the whole sports thing. Who would have thought it? Running, jumps, the occasional flip, yoga and Pilates, of course. Just trying to stay fit. Oh, yes, and a half marathon win. No big deal. <laughs> Just luck, I suppose. It's not much, really. I'm very much at the beginning. I need to work on my backflip, take up skateboarding, but let's not get carried away. Maybe steps first. Thank you, GQ. Congratulations to the truly heroic Captain Sir Tom Moore, the face of resilience and hope amid the months of coronavirus lockdown. Knighted at 100, and not only the oldest person to have had a UK number one single, but the oldest person ever to grace GQ's cover. Well, that is the end of the show. All that's left to be done is to congratulate all of our winners and have the goodie bags delivered safely to my house. Good night. Well, times are tough. We really shouldn't be wasting these goodie bags. Thanks again to tonight's sponsors, Hugo Boss, and special thanks to the London Coliseum, home of the English National Opera. See you next year, hopefully in person. Good night. Ah. Ah. Hey. Oh. God, he's heavy. Probably should have chopped out Piers Morgan's book.